I've been southbound, I've been hellbound, riding on the midnight train. Going too fast now, think I'll slow down, standing in the pouring rain. What's going on, guys? Tristan and Tony here with the Zero Duck 30 podcast. Back on some video action. Video action. <laughs> no, but it's been a minute since uh, it's just been us two on the podcast. I'm and... so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we just wanted to recap some of the last few weeks of duck season. We haven't really been able to do like a recap because we've had several great guests on and been, you know, sitting those podcasts your guys' way. So we wanted to do that. Of course, talk about the veteran hunt. That was a great time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so and yeah. snow goose hunting. Snow goose hunting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tristan went on his first snow goose hunt. I did. Yeah, that's kind of kind of where we are. I mean, we can just start with that if you want. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff to cover, <laughs> you guys. I mean, we really do. Some really special things happened um, these last few hunts that we're going to update you guys on. And uh, um, yeah, I guess I think we just sit here humbled. Yeah, oh, really. Yeah. It, it was it was a good time. You know, we we still had tough duck hunts just like everybody else does. Mm-hmm. Um, but boy, did we have some of our best blind moments. Mm-hmm. Uh, this year in those tough times, you know. So For anyway, sure. but yeah, wh- where you want to take off from? Well, I guess we better start back. So like the last time we really did a recap with you guys was probably, you know, we've we've talked a little bit here and there with several of the guests about, you know, what's kind of been going on, but nothing really in depth since when Katie was on. Mm-hmm. And that was recapping around New Year's weekend when she came out. Um, but I guess, you know, we can kind of start with, around the January 14th area when we had your brother come out and meet us at, um, or my uncle too, um, come out and meet us for his first duck hunting weekend out in Arkansas at Delta Thunder Outfitters. Yeah. Yeah. And so to preface this and the reason why I tell this story is that, you know, I've been obviously on this planet 50 years. My brother is what? Three years behind me. And sorry, Jamie, if I messed that up, (laughs) <laughs> but you see, he's born in 75. So yeah, so three years. And Jamie was just never a hunter, you know? And I've been out hunting since I was 10, you know, probably. And and definitely killing stuff since I was old enough to walk, you know? But Jamie, that wasn't his thing. He was more of a musician, you know? And, and, and that was his hobby, you know? And so we were very different when it came to that. So... Um, here it is, you know, we're at this age now, he's 47, I'm 50, and he sees the fun we've been having. He's been hearing the stories and everything else, and so finally, I talked him into coming out and hunting with us, you know, and, and of course, it was partially a family thing, you know, um, but my point that I'm making with this before we go into this weekend and the story is that, who do you have that needs it? You know, and that's really the main reason why I asked my brother is because, you know, he's he, he works a lot. He's got a, a lot of challenging things in his personal life. And and I was just like, God, this guy needs a break, you know, and boy, did he. And, uh, and we had a great time. So anyway, let's just kind of take off with that. Uh, your memory is better than mine. So we Jamie showed up. Uh, he brought his uh, uh, buddy. Um, uh, Coop. Oh, yeah, but he really looks like. Jep off of uh, Duck oh, Commander. Yeah, he yeah. Does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we called him Jep all weekend. But mm-hmm. um, but him and Coop come out. Coop's first time hunting in Arkansas. Coop's hunted a lot of ducks oh. in, in uh, the Dakotas and Illinois. Yep. Um, but anyway, they came out. We had a great time at Cades and, and um, did Had it some, right. Some poker or something. Yeah, yeah. A lot of drinking. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep, out there in the Thunderbox. And so he got to experience that part. And... Um, we go out and we go on a duck hunt and what happened? Well, uh, we didn't really know what to expect. And, uh, next thing you know, <clears throat> this wood duck come, well, we didn't know it was a wood duck at first, but this duck comes kind of loafing, you know, slowly kind of, it was almost, it was actually a pair and it was like, they were checking us out, Yeah, but they, it's not like, you know, you got some birds working. Like it was just like, they came and straight line straight at us and they kind of like slowed down and it's the it wasn't even like they were gonna land i don't no, know was, and poe pulls up yeah it's just like they were flying super slow for some reason yeah yeah it, like dead on it i think poe saw him first yeah and he just pulls up and bam shoots the drake mm-hmm. well we watched the drake you know fall in the field behind us uh they went and retrieved it and so we're sitting there a couple minutes later 
And I look to my right and I'm like, duck coming in, duck coming in. And I'm like, this is Jamie's, this is Jamie's. Mm -hmm. And it comes, man, I mean, outside of just sitting on the water, it was breaking right there in the middle of the spread and came. Well, we, uh, we think that because it was the Henwood duck yeah. and then Poe shot the Drake. So we think that the hen circled back around and was like, Hey, what happened to my buddy? You know? yeah, and, yep. uh, yeah. She paid the price for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Jamie got his first duck, which was a wood duck. Mm -hmm. And what makes it even more unique is, uh, we told Kate about it and he's like, no shit. And he's like, we're like, yeah. And he goes, that's the first two wood ducks shot by us since he started, mm -hmm. which was the very first duck that he shot when he opened his business. Yeah, so that was 2017, I think he yeah. said. So fast forward to 2022. That's how long it took to shoot another wood duck out of rice fields in Arkansas. But... Yeah, so a crazy thing, and um, you know, and one thing that was really nice of of, of Will Poe is he donated the the Drake to Jamie, mm -hmm. and because Jamie wanted to mount him. Yeah, you know. So the whole point I'm making with that story, man, man, it was a cool just for me to go. I could just tell you guys, Hey, it was a great story. He hunted with his uncle. I hunted with my brother. It was more than that. Yeah. You know, and it was, it was an experience, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, he got to be part of, we take a spec one day, yeah. you know, and, um, Oh, we did end up taking a couple specs. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we, <laughs> so <laughs> that morning we pull up, we meet Kate at the gas station and I know this field we're going to has had a lot of specs flying over. Mm -hmm. And so I, <laughs> I look at Kate and I said, Hey bro, you got an extra spec call in your truck? <laughs> I can't make the expression that he, he looked at me like, I was the dumbest person ever. Yeah. He just smirked at you. He like. did. He did. <laughs> and he goes, well, yeah, you know, and he gives us this call and honestly, God, I picked it up and tried to blow it a couple times after about four or five times. I was like, no, nah, yeah. I, I can't do this. Well, we ended up going out there and long story short, we had some low flying specs that came in. Um, these guys rocked one and then another one came in and we rocked this sucker. Well, it was crippled. And so I knew I had to go get after this thing. Yeah, there's no dog. so <laughs> There's no dog. And so I was like, I'm running after that sucker right now. So I go run it because I knew it was a good bar belly too. And uh, I go out running after that thing. And, dude, I don't know. I don't, have an, I don't have an excuse. But I had three shotgun shells in my gun. And I fired all three of those things. And I was... 35 to 40 yards. I wasn't that far. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. It, yeah. it was as if I didn't hit it at all. Yeah. I know. And I was actually aiming at the head, you right. know, but I felt like, oh, it's like shooting a turkey at 20 yards, you know, whatever. Boom, boom, boom. Not that, not that quick. I had to run up on it, but it, I was like, are you kidding me right now? Well, now I don't have any shotgun shells. So to stay, no, I'm going to tell you guys what happened. <laughs> so let me tell you all what happened. If you don't have any shells, you have to put this wounded animal out of its misery as quick as possible. <laughs> and so I gave him the old Happy Gilmore. It's a good way of putting it. Was it was that simple. <laughs> yeah. I gave him the old Happy Gilmore and he instantly died. Yeah. And it was it was a beautiful thing. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a hell of a weekend in yeah. rap. I mean, it was just a... And I think... Jamie has definitely told me he wants to do it again. Yeah. And he enjoyed, he told me I enjoyed the experience, mm -hmm. you know, so. Well, I I knew like pretty quick on talking to him that he was really just there for the camaraderie and the experience of it and anything else would be a plus. So now that he's like experienced the taste of like duck hunting and stuff, I, I, yeah, that was, when I heard that before we even duck hunted, I was like, oh yeah, this is a good Good perspective to have, you know. A <laughs> good you know what? perspective. And I'm sure he watched me uh Happy Gilmore that goose and think, Man, <laughs> some things just never change. There's my brother again doing something crazy. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so so that was a great weekend. So let's jump on to the next weekend. Oh yeah. We have another special weekend that we're able to hunt with our good buddy Austin. If you go back and watch some of our older videos. Um, you'll see Austin on there. Um, it's because we lived in Florida. He's our buddy. He lived in Florida. Uh, he and Tristan 
Uh, they lived right above Tristan and Katie mm -hmm. and uh, became really close. And he was great. I mean, he still is a great hunting buddy of ours. And uh, so take it from there, Tristan. Yeah. So he um, he gets you, to the airport. You know, oh, wait, well, we, we had met, you know, and because he was obviously my um, neighbor, you know, lived right below me or whatever. And somehow it came about that. He was a duck hunter too. So, you know, of course we hunted in Florida and stuff together and had some good hunts in Georgia and stuff. Um, but fa fast forward to this year and we didn't really have any plans to hunt together. And um, he just hit me up and he's like, Hey man, like if you guys, you know, if are going to Arkansas again, like and have any room or anything, I'd, I'd love to make it work or whatever. So we start game planning. And this is probably uh, mid December. So, you know, not, I mean, it was not wasn't like, that far in, in advance. Yeah, I know, wasn't super far in advance, and um, we start, you know, trying to brainstorm what can we do or whatever. So we figure out the best thing for him to do from Florida is to fly into Memphis, ship his gun, um, but he had a layover in Charlotte. Yep. So and he was coming out for three days to hunt with us. We were gonna pick him up in Memphis, go straight out there, and uh, he, <laughs> I guess he got delayed in Charlotte. Yep. Uh, he got a, his layover or something got mixed up with that. His gun got lost. Long story short, we ended up picking him up three hours later in Memphis. He was so uh, happy. <laughs> oh, man. He, <laughs> this guy was distraught, which I get it. You know, your gun's lost. You have no, at that point, he had no idea. All right, so pause right there. Yeah. While our buddy mm -hmm. is having a shitty time, what did we do? Oh, yeah. We would. <laughs> So it goes, the the vibe here is like, Austin's like pissed. And, and going to be four hours later. Yeah. And doesn't know about his gun, whatever. You and I were like, all right, sweet. We're going to go check out the Bass Pro Pyramid, go to the casino in Memphis. Like, we're just having a good. As waterfowlers, we experience all kinds of extreme weather conditions. Stay bone dry and warm with Frog Togs hunting gear. You can check them out at frogtogs.com or at Frog Togs Hunt on Instagram. The whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and, and let's be clear, we didn't spend that much money. And as soon as we got back to even, I said, Tristan, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just enough time to go get Austin. So. Oh, yeah. But uh, he, had a, he had a tough time. Yeah. But uh, he gets there. He did end up getting his gun the next day. He and Tristan went back over and got it. So, um, but he had a few choice words for American Airlines. Yeah, um, it all worked out, thankfully. Yep, yep. But we get Austin out there the first morning, and I remember we were hunting um, that that uh, the field with the new blind that Kate had built. Mm -hmm. um, he actually built like a floating blind so it could change with the water levels. Mm -hmm. And we were out there, and was that the morning that? We had the big group come in and we just smoked a. I mean, he he'd never seen. Yeah, because it was a pretty. Oh, slow it was at the same field that we shot the. Uh, yeah, the teal video. The, the teal video. Twisted teal video. So, yeah. uh we were sitting there and nothing was, you know, nothing was really going on. It was me, Austin, you, um, and a few other guys, a uh, few Kate's friends and our clients or something like that, and um, he. Uh, we're sitting there, and the next thing you know, like, like teal do, and I must have been a good forty of them, and I couldn't believe how good we shot. Honestly, like, yeah, no, we rocked them. Yeah, I think the, and the guys dropped. we hunted with, the could shoot too. Oh yeah. yeah, I think it was seven dropped out of us six. I mean, that's you know pretty solid for and not the whole group broken the spread. You know, mm -hmm. I'd say about half of them broken the spread, but it was it was a big enough number where I called the shot and it was time to shoot. Yeah. Yeah, so we rocked those, right? Mm -hmm. So I think we took seven. Yeah, we, yeah. we took seven. And so then um, Cade calls us and goes, hey. Oh, like, what? He goes, grab your shit and get back to the lodge right now and wait for next orders. Yeah. <laughs> and we're like, I tell the guys, I go, well, Cade said do this. And, and we're like, all right. So we, we pack it all up, went back to the lodge and waited for, for our next orders. And then what happened? So they got this other field that um, has just been – was lights out this year stupid and um we'll have to talk about that when we get grinder on here mm -hmm. and kate on again but um just a crazy field and the group that was in there before us in the morning they limited out so kate's like all right y'all go over there hunt you know and sure enough we get over there and immediately just it starts getting stupid i mean just teal <laughs> like literally Within five or ten minutes of being there, like, because we had a side by side, right? And you're riding out, you can only take so many people out there. So I think you took me and Austin out mm -hmm. at first. 
So me and Austin are sitting there and we want to get Austin out there because we're like, you know, you know, want him to experience this Arkansas stuff. And um, these teal hop off <laughs> like we see them like probably three, four hundred yards away, hop up. And off, I'm driving back to get the other guys off this freaking reservoir or whatever. And uh, we called them a little bit. And then sure enough, they, here they come. And man, this is just a wad of like two, three hundred teal come in. We didn't drop a single one. <laughs> and but after that, we, we were in actually we we're in disbelief because we were literally we had just gotten into the blind, hadn't loaded loaded guns, nothing. So we see them coming. We're trying to load guns and shit, Uh-oh. and uh, we were just in disbelief. But I, after that moment, I looked at him. I'm like, so do you realize like this is not Florida anymore? Like this is why people come to Arkansas is to see some shit like that. You know? <laughs> But. Right, and you guys didn't even have to shoot a duck. And I remember I pulled back up with those other guys, and Austin's like, and he was so jacked up. It was like the it's like the first time you see somebody get jacked up from a deer hunt. Mm-hmm. You know, they're just like, Dude, I got heart problems and I can't breathe right, and all this kind of. These guys look like they had just seen a ghost. Yeah, I mean, when I pulled up, there was a. Tell me about it. But that was incredible. So that happens, and we get everybody set up. We get the blind and everything, and we shot five man. Yeah. We shot five man, and we shot Teal, Gadwall. Um, a Wedgen. A Mallard Hen. A Pintail. A Pintail. Um, Pretty good little mix of Spoonie. Yeah, so we ended up shooting, um, let's see, the... We had seven when we went in there, so we shot. Ended up shooting like twenty two more or something, or maybe I guess it might have been twenty three more. It, no, it was thirty. We had so thirty we exactly. 30 and yeah, we had six of us and ended up shooting five. A five man, five, you know, limits, you know, but it, exactly, exactly. Um, so, but it was a, it was a, it was a hell of a hunt for him to experience in his first day. Actually, this was so. If you guys can imagine, he has all these problems Friday night. Just fast forward all this. He's having a heart attack over the stuff, which, you know, it's your gun, right? I mean, doesn't have it. We get all this stuff. He's going through this stuff. Monday morning, I mean, Saturday morning, he doesn't get the experience, the big, oh, I just went to Arkansas and things are crazy and Arkansas hunting, right? All you got to do is have a rice field. Mm -hmm. That's all you need. No, it starts off slow. And to be fair, too, Austin's not... The he wasn't. We're gonna get him on here eventually, but he's not the type of dude to like expect anything. He's a very humble, nice guy. Absolutely, and he would never be like come to Arkansas with that attitude. Like, oh, no. gosh, shoot a limit of greenheads, or I'm getting the hell out of here. No, but every if right. you're if you're we were there, right? And when you're a Florida guy, gal, mm-hmm. you're dreaming about coming to Arkansas and hunting. Yes. You got this vision mm-hmm. that is stuff that you don't see down there. All right, like. A slow day in Arkansas is a great day in the Georgia Marsh. Sure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. You know what I mean? And so I think a lot of us, not all of us, but a lot of us take the right attitude when we go out there. And Kay talks about these great guys from from Alabama, um, Georgia, um, other states. Seems to me it's always like a lot of southern eastern to a certain point and there's a couple states he doesn't like um that just stereotypical assholes to to put it out there but um the point is is i think a lot of us come from more of a humbled state and so we we hope that we have this big bang but if it doesn't happen we still have a great time sure you know i mean almost comparable to like me getting into being a deer hunter first before duck hunting where I feel like, where a lot of people are so impatient with duck hunting, I'm not because I've sat there for hours and not seen a deer. Right. You know what I mean? So anyway, um, he, you're exactly right about that with him. Oh, yeah. um, so so true. So he got to, you know, we sat there for hours before that big group came in. Mm-hmm. And so he was sitting there going, <laughs> we are, and we were all cutting up in the blind and laughing and having a good time, listening to rap music, whatever, just just having a good time, making the best of it, you know? Um, but it, it's cool how it progressed for him mm-hmm. because we go into that, we shoot the five man, he gets his first limit ever, his first limit ever, I think, right? No. No, no. His first limit in Arkansas, Yeah, obviously. He shot 
three or four different species. He shot a widgeon. Yeah. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Um, actually, I think we got that on video. Um, and then we go into Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. Help me out there. I honestly don't. I we might be a little backwards on the days because I honestly don't remember. No, we're not so backwards. I I remember Monday. It wasn't Monday morning where we hunted with Adam and we shot like ten, kind of picked them off, shot a couple of geese before we went home. Yep. Yes, yeah, so that was I, Sunday. That was Sunday. So what was Monday? We oh hunt. wait, because that was the long weekend. Yeah. Okay, so we might be a little back asswards. Yeah. I think Saturday sucked. Yeah, and then Sunday was the day we just talked yep. about. And then and Monday. Monday yeah. was when we, we hunted with Adam and uh, his buddy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and Which was a great hunt by like what you just said, those standards. But here's what's cool, and this is what I wanted to talk about. Mm-hmm. So here this this field, and we'll get into this later, you guys, they shot, what was the number? Just Dude. real quick. I, I can't even tell you. I think they shot 800 ducks out of that field alone. But how many days in a row did they shoot limits? I can't even tell you. It was, it was stupid. It was in the teens. Yeah. It was a lot. Yeah, yeah. 77 limits. No, that's that was at one point, and I oh. was saying that because that was the most recent thing I heard, but we'd have to ask them. No, things. it was more than it that. It went on longer than that, yeah. where it was just stupid. For, stupid. Basically from, I think from about the first or second week of january on it was lights out yeah the rest of the season well yeah yeah it was stupid it, it got it got slow for a little bit and then picked back up well and it was at the same time that the arkansas game of fish said that northeast arkansas was hot same time that um migration station, migration station was saying the same thing so we go into sunday and this field that we're talking about and this was one of the coolest things i witnessed as far as how duck behavior works is we saw this craziness the night before and the next day it was like holy cow what happened the ducks just weren't moving i mean they weren't moving or they had left because it went from like stupid numbers of ducks in the air like constantly you you probably couldn't go 30 seconds, two minutes without seeing a duck to seeing them every 30 minutes, maybe once an hour, something like that. It just changed overnight. And it was kind of a cool experience because that's a great example of, you know, you think you got it right. You think, okay, hey, I'm on the X. And the next day they just don't fly. Yep. Maybe that should be a hat. Sometimes ducks don't fly. <laughs> That's the truth. But yeah. so it was cool for Austin to experience that whole gamma of that because you got to feel the highs, mm-hmm. got to feel some lows, you know, and have his own personal struggles. Yeah. But it wasn't just like a dream world. Right. You know, there was definitely a reality piece there to the hunt. And so, so that was an exciting weekend. And, uh, man, again, get somebody else out there. Yeah, right. man. and the last week of the season, we both had stuff going on and didn't get to duck hunt that weekend. But of course, you knew. Well, that. I'll just be straight up. I had responsibilities at home, straight up. And sometimes y'all don't lose sight of that. You guys sometimes keep those things in order. And, and we, we just had to miss the last, I, me personally, I had to miss the last weekend of duck season, which was the worst thing I could imagine. But um, priorities come first, right? Well, and you knew too. Yeah, the Veterans Weekend in your back pocket. Yes, a Veterans Hunt. So it kind of was just like, well, you know, this sucks. We gotta miss this, but you know, we do have the Veterans Hunt. So yep, went out there for the Veterans Hunt. We took Mario. Mario's been around. You guys have seen him in some videos and stuff. One of he's a Marine vet. You're a Navy vet. And he had a couple of his other um, Marine buddies meet out there, right? Yep. And these guys had never waterfowl hunted ever. Yeah, never. Never. Um, one of them from Illinois, one of them from Tennessee um, that Mario served with in, in the in the Marines. And so <laughs> they we like, all right, we're going to meet. Um, we're going to meet out there. They're going to get there before us on Friday because we had to work. So they got there like Friday afternoon Mm -hmm. and since they pulled up grinder was in the, I guess in the driveway and he goes, are you so-and-so and And you so-and-so? And he's like, yeah, he goes, you guys want to go goose hunt? And they're like, 
right now? And they're like, he's like, well, hell yeah. And, then, and, and those guys got out there and went out and what'd they shoot? They shoot a speck in a snow goose or something or a no, couple snow geese. They, Cause that was, um, they couldn't shoot. It wasn't specks. It was a uh, Ross and a, another snow goose or whatever. And, um, yeah, so they shot two snow geese. Yeah. So that was cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so as soon as they got there, like, Immediate put, waterfowl. Put their feet on the ground in Arkansas. The grinders like, y'all want to go hunt right now? And they want to kill some shit. Yeah. So they're like, hell yeah, let's go kill some shit. <laughs> so that was cool for that start off with them that way. And and I think one of them mounted one of those is mounting one of those geese. Yeah. Um, but then we went out on the veteran hunt and Tristan filmed. Um, we should have we'll still have an episode coming out with that, I'm sure. Um, but it just you know, it, it's it's a week after um duck season's been shut down Mm -hmm. so obviously there's an advantage there you know i mean the ducks haven't been shot at for a week and stuff so um we were just blessed and and had a really good hunt um you know we uh shot a four four man um we took everything from teal um never shot a mallard doggone mario he's not allowed to come to arkansas anymore (laughs) if i want to shoot a mallard I got to get like a couple of mallards before Mario gets to come back out. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we shot that. We shot uh, pintails. Pintails, yeah. The guys, didn't didn't both of them get a, end up getting a pintail? No, one of them did. Oh, you, I did. You got a pintail, Mario got a pintail. So there's three pintails, um, a shoveler, a bunch of green wings. Yeah. Um, Gadwall. Gadwall. There was a widgeon that got away. Yes, that, that was sucker. some BS. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that sucker it was right there, and everybody whiffed, and I was like, "F!" I wanted that widgeon <laughs> to die so bad because it was something about like oh, we sky blasted a snow goose, didn't we? Or no, that was with Nestor. Yeah, that I'm was sorry. yeah, and, but uh, <laughs> something about I haven't seen a lot of widgeon killed, and I guess they're not the most common thing out there, but like at least in that area, it seems like. When they come in, they just come out of nowhere and they're like, in your decoys right now. Every, and yeah, God, and you can tell just the way their body is, their feathers and stuff. You're, I just like, we all knew it was a widget and everybody missed. We're like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> no, they just rock a different style, I guess. And, yeah. And that, that shorter beak is noticeable. Yeah. I think right off the bat. Something you know? about their tail feathers, too. I don't know what it is, but like the way they fan, it kind of yeah. looks in their beak. Yeah. It's two things like you, that. You see it. And, and man, is it fun when the sun is hitting? You know, it makes it so much easier to yeah. identify birds, you know, but I think it's funny, you know, a lot of people like those guys, new hunters are like, how the hell do you guys identify these birds? <laughs> and like literally like five, six years ago, seven years ago, when we first started duck hunting, we we're like, how do you identify these birds? <laughs> <That's we don't> <laughs> know. But it, it's just like, you just pick up an eye for like seeing the It's wing. picking up an eye. Yeah. The wing flight, the body shape. And the, people you know. telling you what to help look for I, yeah. I think we talked kind of on podcast a couple of weeks ago where mm-hmm. i said something about me listening to that old timer tell his granddaughter about how to to tell the difference between a diving duck and a puddle duck on the water mm-hmm. and a diving duck's tail is always in the water yeah you know except for i guess a, a ruddy would be the exception to that with their little pointy tail that comes out the back but um but that's a big notice i, I never knew that until yeah. i heard him say, say right, that yeah. and now when i look out on the water i go yeah, immediately can, you can tell. Yeah, you can tell. But it's those little things like thinking about a pintail being a bowling pin. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, it makes sense. You know, and you see it and you're like, okay, yeah, I know that's what they are. But it sure does help when the sun's shining on them. Oh, yeah. You get to see the actual color on them versus yeah. just like this black or gray blob flying real fast. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So we ended up shooting them good and had a great hunt and could be more blessed. And thank you, Kate, again for helping us veterans out with that. I uh, really appreciate that. And, uh, more importantly, two people that have never been waterfowl hunting now are so hooked. They're, they are so hooked. They're, they're ready to do it again. So <laughs> um, that's exciting for everybody. So, um, But we did that. And then... Let me take a break. <laughs> that's just a good time. So, yeah, the next day, uh, you know, I could actually pick up the gun because it's snow goose season. It comes back in, so... Your first first snow goose yeah, hunt. Yeah, first snow goose hunt, and uh, we get out there, and I guess there's probably eight or nine of us or whatever, and had some good groups come in. I think we shot 35 mm-hmm. with eight or nine people. and Shot some beautiful blues. I don't know the difference still. I like. I feel like I've been explained it. Several just like times. we were just talking about. There's a progression, I think. Yeah, the only thing, I know like a Ross goose because they're a smaller one, and 
But I don't know. Anyway, I just I just know that they're fun to shoot. And <laughs> they, I just made jerky actually um, yesterday, and it's really damn good. I'm putting out a YouTube video on it um, here in the next few days. But uh, I was really surprised. It turned out really damn good. Um, I mean, it tastes like beef jerky. Dude. Yeah, we mowed through that. That was a two pound bag. Dude, look at that. So. I mean, that's a beautiful piece of. Been mowing through it. Oh, I'm gonna show right here. Um. But it's been consistent the whole time. Yeah, you're saying. Yeah, because I taste. I made duck jerky before, and I don't know if it's just the different types of ducks. Because I had when I made duck jerky, it was like a bag of duck that was gadwall, teal, spoonies, whatever. I don't even know pintails, all kinds of shit. Um, but that's that's good. I mean, Dude. it's really a. But um, he get to his grandma at night. Yeah, and she was like. Kind of sketched out a little bit, and she was like, "No, that's good." And she took another piece. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but so now, uh, shoot, I wish I I took four of them snow geese home, and I know you took a handful. I'm mm. like, damn, I wish I would have taken eight home. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I was telling Kane about you, you making the jerky. He goes, "You can take all of them up. You want to? Oh, I will, dude. <laughs> shoot." I mean, for lunch today, I'm on a diet right I'll have now. to strap down a bunch and, of snow geese in the back of the truck next or this weekend. Yeah, and all I ate for lunch today was a bunch of snow goose jerky and uh, some berries. Nice. <laughs> nice. But anyway, the hunt was cool, and we had, you know, I know a lot of those guys are chasing, like, them big spins and stuff, and we didn't really have that, but we had, like, groups of eight or ten come in, and we just rained them, them out. out. It was yeah. awesome. It was. It was. <laughs> and the very first volley, uh, we had, like, a single come in mm-hmm. and Kate called the shot and I unloaded my whole gun, dude. I got an extension <laughs> extension extension magazine tube on that thing with that can hold like twelve shells. And I was just like bah, 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 all the way to the ground. And Mario goes, Oh my God, you just unloaded your whole gun. Why did you do that? I go, Because I could. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good feeling, man. It's just like war. I'm oh, yeah. a man. I guess that's part of the addiction of snow goose hunting. Oh, Conservation of snow goose yeah. hunting. Yeah. It was fun, though, man. It was, it was a good time. Heck yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of the wrap up of where we are to this point. You're going out again to snow goose hunt this weekend. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there'll be some good stories from that. Well, and I get to take somebody else again. <laughs> True. You know, I, I mean, it's just, you know, I guess the older you get, or the, I would say it has nothing to do with age, it has to do with your experience as a hunter. Um, the more experience you got, because Tristan's starting to go through this a lot to, uh, at his age now, is, you know, you get to that stage where it's just, it's almost an addiction to see the smiles on somebody's, somebody new, you know, their face. And so I get the opportunity to take my, my daughter's boyfriend out. Um, Cody's never been, I don't know, he kind of hunt like that before. So I'm going to take him out. And uh, Daryl, a good buddy of mine, that's a, a, a Marine vet. Uh, from Florida, he's going to come up, and uh, so we're going to go do that this weekend. Heck yeah, bring this will be my last hunt of the season. And my wife asked me to make her a promise, and I told her, "No, I can't because promises are only out to be broken." <laughs> 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 no, but it is. It, it'll be done for me. Um, um, yeah, and and until we get into uh, maybe I will go turkey hunting. But, yeah, maybe so. But yeah, so I'm super excited about that. But, you know, the other thing we wanted to kind of talk about tonight, you know, is is some of our favorite moments from this year. You know, um, looking back, you know, it, it's 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 so f- one of the biggest, I guess, selfish benefits that that we get out of of bringing you all uh, the reality of hunting is having this like a it's almost like a family photo album. You know what I mean? It really helps you just remember those memories and, and just, you know, and make history with that. Cause once you put a, a video out there and stuff, you know, that that's there for you for a long time, you know? And, and so it, it, at least it makes it easier for me at 50 to remember stuff. And, uh, man, we went out and just real quick about teal season. This, we hunted in the same area that we did the year before and shot 76 birds on opening weekend. And we didn't raise our gun. If you guys watch our video, um, uh, Tristan did a great job with that, telling the story. Thank you again, uh, Georgia DNR. Um, you win some, you lose some, right? <laughs> and so, but, you know, we still had a great time, had a great experience and stuff. Went out to Arkansas, um, had a great time hunting in the, I mean, it was the first time we ever hunted in a decoy spread in our underwear. I mean, not hunted, fished, I'm sorry. Yeah. We're fishing in the decoy spread 
because it was what 85 90, 90. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to experience that and, and had a great time made the best of it caught some fish shot a couple teal um went back to kate's cooked it all up had a great time you know doing that kind of thing um and uh what about you tristan what are some of those hunts that stand out for you that uh, obviously had to be the weekend with katie coming i mean that's just an obvious yeah this season was weird it was like there was not a lot of um things for me personally this year um that really like made it to where i enjoyed last year was that for me there was a lot of cool things that i got to cross off my list last year and just um experiences that i felt me personally um this year the funnest times i had were like with Katie, like you said, um, with Austin, with Jamie, mm-hmm. um, the veterans hunt. It really, for me, duck hunting has switched to just a communal and just seeing other people have these awesome experiences. I mean, well don't, get, don't get me wrong. I love to shoot ducks, and I'm always chasing that awesome mixed bag day. And just, man, those days are freaking awesome. But I, you know, it's. Uh, I felt like last year I crossed off a lot of those, like the most exciting things for me and that feeling that I felt last year, I felt that for other people this year just because sure. they got to, you know, do that. So, you know, I, whether it be, I think Austin, you know, that weekend that sticks out, Jamie with the wood duck, mm-hmm. Austin shooting that widgeon just because like it was a fl- fluttered up in the air and we all knew it was a widgeon and he shot it and we we're like, Oh my God. Like, Katie <laughs> shooting the, the, the spoonie. Yeah. She, her getting a spoonie and just. Just the little moments like that. Uh, Cade calling you a hubcap in the blind. <laughs> we, we're hunting, and uh, Cade's always like, yeah, Tony's jumping around down there. Do you see those ducks and all this? And he, The c- ducks are looking down there like, shit, y'all see the hubcap down there? Because like, Tony's got a bald head, and of course he's wearing a hat, but that's part of the joke. So, you know, just, man, it's it was a hell of a fun time. I, I Everybody in the blind was laughing because we're all like, like a duck knows what a hubcap is. <laughs> and I got to say, too, kind of wrap up, you know, my favorite things. Um, you know, getting to hunt um, Florida a couple times this year. Not as much as we normally do, but um, getting to go down there and hunt with Billy um, from SoFlo Waterfowl or SoFlo Outdoors. Outdoors. Um, that's been on the pod- pa- podcast a couple times. Um just being able to go down there and hunt and us shooting the two man limit or ringnecks and just seeing how they do it in like South, South Florida and going out there and moving islands and shit with his boat. And just, <laughs> I, it was, it was different, but man, um, that was definitely one of my favorite hunts too. Just doing something different, you know? That's cool. Yeah. You know, I mean, as we talk more about this, you know, it's funny how you can reflect on things, um, and, and you experience them, but maybe don't reflect on them. And, you know, this really has been a year of us sharing mm-hmm. than killing. Yeah. I mean, we've shot our ducks. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. And we've had some blessed days that I have had great hunts, you know, but I didn't even realize until now how many smiles we put on people's faces this year. Yeah. You know, or we're at least a part of whether we were involved or, you know, it was one of uh, Cade's paid folks mm-hmm. that came out and, you know, hadn't duck hunted before. And we ran into a couple of those folks, you know, and yeah. um, that in reflection now that we're talking about all this, it really was a year of that. Yeah. That's where our satisfaction, you hit that dead on the nail. Um, that's where our satisfaction came out of this year. Yeah. Was doing those things. No doubt. For me, you know, um, were, were you done talking yeah, about? Yeah, that was pretty much it. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, um, it definitely was the same thing. I think we've already discussed a lot of those things, you know, with my brother and Mm -hmm. Katie and all those things, you know, but, um, I definitely had some selfish fun Mm -hmm. (laughs) this year, you you know, um, never in my life would I have go into a duck hunt thinking or a weekend that thinking that I could shoot uh, a limit three days in a row. Yeah. I mean, I just, to me, that's appalling. Yeah. And I, if that doesn't happen again, I'll be okay with it, mm-hmm. you know, but it's, it's kind of looking like looking at my big buck up there and going, okay, that was the, the top of the mountain, you know, I'm fine with that. Um, but I got to experience that and it was with other people, you yeah. know, a three man, a four man and a six man. And we're talking shooting seven, eight different species on every one of those hunts. You know, I shot 
the most beautiful spoonie I'll ever shoot. You know, um, I posted pictures of it, but that was memorable to me. Those experiences of, you know, um, grinder arcade driving off when me and Colton is in this field and he's driving off in the side by side and we're going to put decoys out. And it sounded like a bunch of poop dropping. Bloop, 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 bloop. And Colton goes, do you hear that? And I go, well, yeah. And he goes, dude, the ducks are landing behind. Cade's driving off in the side by side. And they're landing in between us and Cade. I mean, just bum, 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 bum. And I just couldn't believe it. I just I, never seen anything like that, you mm-hmm. know? And at first, do you want coffee that doesn't suck? Get the duck. Dirty Duck Coffee is made specifically for the waterfowl enthusiast. Enjoy flavors like Morning Wood, Dark Dynasty, Cinnamon Teal Snickerdoodle, and First Flight to unlock the flavor that you'll enjoy in the blind for years to come. Our friends at Dirty Duck Coffee Company are now offering all Zero Duck 30 followers a 15% discount when you use code Zero Duck 15 on your next order. Shooting light when we took the first volley, which we didn't shoot nothing. The first five volleys, I mean, we're all pretty good shooters, you know, and it was just overwhelming. I just had never experienced it like that, where it was that crazy, you know, so it was cool on a personal level to see that. Um, One of my favorite hunts, which is a video that's getting ready to drop on Wednesday, uh, was quite frankly, the video you guys are going to watch. A lot of you might watch that and go, why was that his favorite hunt? Well, it's it's like I was saying in the opening of it. It's and I'm not going to give anything away, but it was it was the experience. It was who it was with. It was it was a couple of buddies mm-hmm. going out hunting, you know, and and that's what made it special for me. So it was one of my favorite hunts this year. I uh, was doing that, and then um, really outside of that, um, you know, I really enjoyed um, just the the smiles for everybody else the rest of the season. That's really kind of what it turned into after that. Yeah, for sure. And I guess not duck hunting related. The only other thing I would add would be um, the deer I shot. <laughs> Hell you know, yeah. The day, I guess a day or two after Christmas. Cause it's just with us on the road with deer. The day after Christmas, it was 15 years. Well, wait, wait, no. How many oh, years yeah. was it to the date? Um, 12 or 13, 13, no, no, no. 13 years. No, it's way longer than that. Shit, 14? No, it's 20. It'd be, you were 12. So 14 years to the date. 14 years to the day. Yeah. That Tristan shot his first deer with a bow. Mm -hmm. He smokes this freaking spike at 45 yards in the woods. And y'all look it up on YouTube. It's a smoke show. He just said, pop, pop that thing. And what was kind of strange about it, when you watch the video, We'll tell them. Yeah, so um, that just, you know, being 14 years, that was kind of a cool thing. And there's been several of my deer that you've seen me shoot, which is pretty cool. And um, just, you know, you were there that morning, too. And um, just uh, that. I called it before that happened. Well, yeah, I I don't remember, honestly. It was a blur that morning because. We saw a piebald deer that morning. We did, and we saw like 25 deer. And it wasn't like every 20 minutes, like. And this is a place like we might see three deer, six deer, no deer. Yeah. It's that kind of spot. It's not like we're always seeing 20 something deer. So we're just like ecstatic. Like this is a crazy morning. It was cold as hell too. We didn't have to shoot anything. No. And this, uh, we're just like, I think you said like, man, uh, there's going to be a dumb spike that walks through or something. And I'm like, I hope so, man. I'm trying to get some meat in the freezer. And I saw him walking. I'm like, oh shit, he's kind of far. And uh, I had j- I had lost my range finder earlier in the season, so I had missed a deer earlier on in the year because I didn't have my range finder like an idiot and had to guess yardage and just shot underneath it. And um, this situation, I was like, nope, range that deer. I was like, that because mom got you one for Christmas, right? Yeah, for Christmas. That's why the day before, say. yeah, the day before I got that range finder. I'm like, I'm using that tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, I don't typically take shots over 40 yards. That's pretty much my range. But I was pretty desperate at this point. And I saw him walk, and I knew there was a clearing at 45 yards, and that's where he was going to be. So I put that 40-yard pin on its back and just, man, like a freaking pop. 
and saw him run off with the arrow. And it was, when you see that right behind the shoulder, you're just, you just know. And that's just well, such a great like, thing. You saw that blood squirting out of him, right? And I go, oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> I'm, oh, yeah. Because yeah. you know how it is, like, anybody that's You don't believe it. it. You question. You're like, did I shoot it? You, you could have shot it perfect. Well, but what about that deer earlier in the season mm-hmm. that you sh- thought you shot yes. over? Yes. And I, that was the one that I shot under. Yeah, you shot under. Yeah. So you that that happens when you're looking and you question yourself. The mm-hmm. point is you're questioning. I did that on a, a three yard shot of a deer one time, <laughs> you know, because he got down there about hundred yards and started walking away. Mm-hmm. Did I even hit it? Right. You yeah. know what I mean? So I t- I totally agree with you on that. You know, but yeah, you, you hit that thing and talk about you know it only went. I I thought it was like one twenty five, mm-hmm. one hundred twenty five yards, so average distance, even for a double lung shot, yeah. whatever, and. We definitely thought he shot a pocket rocket. Yeah. I mean. Because where it was, it was, I mean, you know, usually when you see that, like, right behind the shoulder low shot. And that little bend of the elbow right there. Yeah, that's usually a heart shot. So I was like, oh, yeah. You know, I thought it was, you know, that deer's not going. Oh, what's crazy is he didn't jump the arrow at all. No. Like, didn't move at all. And I had to stop him, too. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to get get him to stop. And uh, you would have thought. You know, maybe just a dumb spike. You know, if that was an older, mature doe, probably would duck that arrow. Who knows? Yeah, probably so. I mean, he definitely didn't have Which would have helped me out, actually. It would have <laughs> yeah, been a double long shot. <laughs> it would have been. But that was the thing that's wild about it when you watch the video is the deer didn't move at all. No. And that's what makes it so beautiful. You guys just have to go check it out on our YouTube channel. But, yeah, he shoots this. It's like a rainbow. It seems like because it's like, pew, pop. Yeah. And it runs off and... Yeah, it didn't go that far, but the we- we're, so what did we, we did an autopsy. Yeah, so the weird thing, we're like, there was- at Plenty f- of blood. At first, it kind of, if I remember right, it was kind of like a decent little trickle at first, like nothing crazy, and I was thinking, in the back of my head, you've had this experience if you deer hunted before, you're like, all right, what's going on? Here we go. Some bullshit's about to happen. We're not mm-hmm. going to find this deer, and uh, then it really opened up, and I was like, all right, now we're now we're getting somewhere. Surely it just took him a minute to start bleeding or something, and we find two beds within twenty yards of each other. Boom, boom. Then we see we like it wasn't like we were jumping them out of beds or anything. We saw the deer after the second sure. bed. Yeah, because we we questioned even stopping. Yeah, we when did. we saw those two beds. I mean, but the positive thing, if you don't know this, when you see beds that close to each other, mm-hmm. the quicker the bed, the quicker he's going to die. Yeah, they're hurt. I mean, if if you if your beds go from a hundred yards to fifty yards to twenty five yards. You know, it doesn't mean necessarily if you find them every 25 yards, keep going. It'll be only five more yards. No, I mean, but the point is, is that that deer is hurting Mm -hmm. and has to lay down. So don't keep pushing it. And also, I mean, we waited probably an hour or two after I shot that deer just because we wanted to keep hunting, you know, throughout the morning, see if anything else came along, if you could get a shot at one or whatever. Um, So we gave it plenty of time knowing that was a good shot or whatever we thought. Um, But we, we get this deer open and we're looking at the heart and lungs over, you know, flipping them over and stuff. And we couldn't find a spot where the broadhead clipped the arrow or the lungs. So I think I shot it just so low that it missed the heart somehow. And it was right there, though. I missed the heart and just hit like a vital artery or something. The deer just bled out. And thankfully, you know, it worked out. But yeah, that was... That was a cool memory. That was the 11th deer I've shot with my bow. Um, and I'm kind of where hunt deer hunting is at for me is like, it's not really about like shooting a bunch of them every year, or even shooting a monster. Of course I'd love to do that, but it's more like, I don't want to go a year without shooting a deer. I've had that happen once in the last like six years. And, uh, I, to me, it's like, that's just a bummer to me. Like I want to experience that every year. Cause it's such a great thing to experience, you know, it is. Yeah. It is. <laughs> this is the only second time in my life that I haven't shot a deer. That's crazy. Um, outside of, I can't say a second. I guess I would have to say. Because the Navy. Four, yeah. So it would have to be the sixth time. Yeah. But for four years, I, I couldn't help it. I was, you know, I was overseas and everything. But um, but there was one year whenever I was young and then um, this year. Yeah. But honest to God, I feel like I shot deer. <laughs> I mean, I do because. It was a team, team win. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was a cra- I mean, we had some great hunts. Out of that tree stand this year on public land, you yeah. know, and I really like what's going on over there. So, hopefully, and uh, 
Maybe we'll be able to get on some turkeys over there too. Yeah, hopefully. You know, we kind of we kind of got an idea where some are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so if they make it through the quota time, mm-hmm. we might be able to get their ass. But <laughs> yeah. um, or get Katie to get one. Yeah. Um, but no. So that was it. Was great. And and while we're on the deer hunting topic, we went out five six of us went out to Illinois this year. And if you guys follow us, you know that I'm a very, we, uh, I mean, especially me, are very experienced Illinois public land hunters. I've got spots that I could put people on that somebody probably, you know what? Y'all, before I pass away, you need to like pay me off for some of the stuff that I know. Because honest to God, I've got so much knowledge in my head that I could, I could probably put, if, if I had, if I really had to put 40, 50 people in a tree stand mm-hmm. one morning, I could easily do it. Yeah. And put them on deer. Yeah. yeah all in this one public land area or a couple of public land areas. But, um, but the point I'm making with this is if there's anything close to a guarantee of shooting a deer, if you're a good shot, yeah, I'm going to put you on that in public land. I wasn't guiding. Right. Cause I was hunting. Yeah. But, we had Mario hit that deer. Well, it's held head true. You've always said if we hunted there for a week, five days. Five days in a row, you will have an opportunity yes. at a book buck. Yeah. Several deer, mm-hmm. but an opportunity to book buck. And, and that's always held true. Always yeah. held true. And um, and a lot of that strategy, the way we hunt, setting areas aside, sometimes I, I might hunt for four days in one spot, but I'm saving one spot for that last day. Mm-hmm. Or that one perfect day out of those five. Yeah. You know, whatever. Um, but yeah, we were deerless. Mm-hmm. We were deerless. Mario made a great effort at one. And man, we trailed that thing forever. And it was just in a dead zone on the deer. And Tristan and I even went back the next day after three miles or something and went back the next day. And our partners at HuntWise are offering an exclusive discount for Zero Duck 30 followers. As an elite member, some of the features you'll immediately gain access to are hunt cast, wind cast, peak kill times, property lines, owner information and phone lookup, 250 map layers, unlimited offline maps, 3D maps, social media, and on top of it all, save up to 50% off some of the top hunting brands in the industry. Download and explore the number one hunting tool set today and save 20% by using code DUCK30 found fresh blood beds you know where the thing was still alive let's get into that a little bit because and i i apologize i don't know if we've got into this on the podcast in depth i don't think we have and you know this deer bled so good the entire time and it was something that you had never seen all the hundreds we got some of those videos from that you should show it yeah and And the terrain of this deer covered yeah we would you know we're getting into these valleys and stuff and we're like there is no way in hell the way this deer is bleeding that's making it back up and uh you know it got to the point i think when we stopped for the night uh that we ended up calling the um deer dog tracker guy yep um and got talking about the single lung shot and you can kind of go into that but like that's something that we didn't really realize like what was going on and for sure had to have been the case with mario's deer we think yeah no, there's just uh, there's definitely an area there that you can shoot a deer in that looks like a good shot, um, and not hit any vitals. I mean, that's the bottom line. Mm-hmm. And these deer are tough as shit, dude. And I don't know. I've seen a lot of blood trails in my life. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot, a ho- hundreds, mm-hmm. hundreds that I've been on. And you know, I'm definitely one that's been humbled by going. Oh my God, look at the blood yeah. and not finding the deer or the reverse where it's like pin drops and then boom, it opens up. And yeah. You find it. yeah. So I, I mean, I, I, I stay very humble, and especially if I got somebody that hasn't got that much experience, I'm definitely not getting their hopes up. Yeah. If anything, I want it to be the opposite. So it's more of a surprise, you know yeah. what I mean? And man, I saw a lot from this blood. I saw a lot of blood from this deer. I found bubbles in the blood. Um, well, we had kind of- I, I I think that that deer lived on a single lung shot. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we hit that area where there was no vital. Mm-hmm. I saw too much bubbles in the blood, mm-hmm. you know. But they can live through that shit, dude. And some of them die, and, and I think that the, all these animals are built differently, and some of them have a stronger will to survive. And you just don't know. 
Yeah. You know, but this deer definitely lived. Well, you know, in the next morning when we picked that blood trail back up, we know we left all night, we picked it back up. And how many hundreds of yards were we able to follow it every three feet? A oh, drop of blood. Dude, it went right down a, a, a logging road. Yeah. And it was like we were having a conversation walking and following the blood trail without even having to really pay attention. Yeah. It was that, like, drip, 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 drip. And I'm talking, like, size of your thumbnail, mm-hmm. constant. And at this point, when we picked that back up, I mean, how far have we traveled? If a human would have lost the amount of blood in that one 300-yard walk that we took, yeah, they'd be dead. Yeah. But there was three miles before that, or whatever it was. Two it was... miles, I don't remember what it was. Mm-hmm. A lot. And going through terrain like this. Yeah. I've got that one video still mm-hmm. of me looking down on you guys and... Mario's at the bottom of the hill, like going FML. Yeah. I'm not going up that thing, you know. And and you're literally having to grab hold of trees to to climb up. It you was, know, dude, it was nuts. And it, when we found, they're tough some bitches, man. Those deer. When we found that bed right at the end, um, you know, well, we found six beds within one briar patch within. 15, 20 yards. The of blood each other. just kept looking fresher in each one. Yeah, exactly. And it's just like, you know, that deer was laying there all night. And unfortunately, we probably came. That deer was staying there wounded and we probably spooked it out of there. Um, but, you know, at that point, you're talking, what, 36 hours from yeah. the time that deer had been shot? Yeah. I mean, shoot, that's just crazy. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, Illinois didn't work out the way it was supposed to. And hey, it's hunting. Yep. You know, but we sure did drink a lot of beer and have oh, a yeah. lot of good times, you I know. I broke my shin on the freaking <laughs> end of a damn. My shin still hurts. This was first week of November, second week of November. I hit the uh, the freaking hitch. hitch of a truck and freaking smoked my shin on oh, it. Oh, bro. Shorts. <laughs> Look at this. This is from two weeks ago. Three weeks ago. Damn, what'd you do? I hit the hitch. Oh, you did it too? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. I don't On that know. veteran hunt weekend, that thing is gigantic. I don't know how I didn't cut myself open. Oh, I, I thought I for I, sure. I got missing bone or something. <laughs> I don't know what happened to my leg. But uh but no, no. So um but yeah, we had some some great deer hunting and stuff too. But um yeah, Good what time. else have we got? So so what are some of the things that we got? What are on the horizon here? We got the video mm-hmm. that's getting ready to drop on Wednesday. Yep. Um, that's a uh, mean Cade on the most efficient little badass two man spec limit hunt. Um, it was, it, I, I don't have words, dude. It was, it was, I had not experienced that many speckle belly geese on me like that. It looks like the kind of day that if you had 20 people, everybody would have got their limit kind dude, of thing. It, it well, cause. One thing Cade's big about when we're hunting is keeping your head down. Mm-hmm. They'll see your face, you know, and stuff. Because they're looking, they're not looking for what's right. They're looking for what's wrong. And you got all these eyes. And so when they started to come in and this feed got up, he goes, get your head down. <laughs> you know, I always feel like it's Lieutenant Dan yelling at me, you know. <laughs> He's like, get your head down. Well, I just put my head down and had my hoodie on and it was like this. And I could hear them, dude. Mm-hmm. It was starting to crack on my ear. They were getting so close. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I got to look. I got to look. I got to look. And I looked out of the right corner of my eye. And I remember going, holy shit. And that time, I hit record on the camera. And I got it up. And, and I got some great footage of it. I don't know, man. <laughs> that was that was something special to me. I mean, that. And... You even hear, you even hear Cade like towards the end of the video when we shoot the limit. He he lets out this laugh that was just like, that's about as fun as it gets, you know. And sure. uh, it was just it was it was a great hunt, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Heck yeah, no, that'll be out Wednesday. Um, I guess this podcast will probably be out after that because that's dropping tomorrow night. So who knows? We'll probably drop this podcast in a week or something. But yep. What else we got going on? Uh, so. You guys can be looking out for, we got a lot of educational stuff coming out you guys' way. I got uh, a goose uh, jerky with that we were just talking about. I did a little video on that. It's nothing like high production or anything, but um, that'll be out probably next week. And like you said, educational. Yep, I got some um, some maintenance things. Um, I'm going to do a walkthrough uh, on my um, War Eagle 750. Um, it's a 2021 model. 
Uh, and it's also got the Gator Tail 40XD, so I'm going to be going through a walkthrough on that engine, some of the off-season service things you should be doing, um, you know, and uh, some important tips, you know, just to maintain your, your boat, maintain your, your motor and, and that kind of thing, and let you guys know about why we run it and, and uh, educate you a little bit more about those two things if you're in the market for looking for, a, you know, a, a, a boat and a motor. Heck yeah. So we have a lot of different things coming out for you guys and uh, once they connected. Um, but yeah, we really appreciate y'all listening and to staying tuned in with us. And and uh, I'm still embarrassed being on camera, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, Tristan, you got anything else to add? No, that's, that's really the gist of it. And, um, you know, just going to keep, we're going to do a lot more of this off season of, like you said, the educational, just staying in touch with y'all um, through YouTube. Obviously, the podcast, um, we are, I guess, about five weeks out from the one-year anniversary of the podcast, so that's pretty cool. We're getting to that. We got to do some Apple Crown on that night. Yeah, we got to. That's got to be a crazy <laughs> podcast. If any of y'all know me, I'm yeah. like I'm like the peer pressure Apple Crown guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, I've even been mentioned in people's weddings yeah. <laughs> <laughs> about doing this to folks, and so if you ever hunt with me, just know that that's going to happen. Yeah, you're going to get some Apple Crown at some point. But... And to be clear... We are under no endorsements with Crown Royal. But if you'd like to endorse this podcast, we'd appreciate it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Just like, I, we might as well put it out there. Five Hour Energy, if you're listening to this, yeah. bro, duck hunters, all hunters, mm -hmm. use your stuff like the extreme sport people uses a Red Bull. Yeah. I promise you, you're, one of your biggest demographics is all of us crack addicts that have that five hour because you started us on five hours and now we are on five hour extras and we need something more than that. <laughs> yeah, no, there, like you said earlier, there was a, uh, when you were younger, there was a, uh, uh outdoor, um, energy company and yep. man, there really needs to be like, they need to market something towards the outdoor community. Cause man, we, we go through some energy. Drinks. <laughs> we sure do. We sure do. But y'all, thank you so much for staying tuned in with us and, and look forward to what we got going on. Thank you guys for tuning in. See you next time. See you next time. I've been southbound, I've been hellbound, riding on the midnight train. Going too fast now, think I'll slow down, standing in the pouring rain.